News for Women. Hello and welcome to the Frosty News for Women. I am Tierica. I present important women's issues and fearless feminine voices disrupting our society. Today is October 15th, 2023. Here is the Frosty News for Women. On October 7th, 2023, a military group called Hamas launched a surprise attack on Israeli communities. They claim to have fired more than 5,000 rockets while gunmen stormed Israeli villages, killed locals, and abducted dozens of Israeli citizens. Why would they do that? The Feisty News presents a brief history on the conflict between Palestine and Israel. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I want to at least start the discussion. Palestine and Israel are neighbors. In 1947, the United Nations voted to divide Palestine land in the British mandate into two states, one Jewish, one Arab. The purpose of the British mandate was to establish a national home for the Jewish community following the devastation of the Holocaust. After the Holocaust, Jewish people were not safe anywhere. They needed a refuge to call their own. So the UN divided up the land and in 1948, the state of Israel was established. As soon as Israel was established, a massive war broke out between the Palestine Muslims and the Jewish community of Israel and Israel won the war. Through their victory, Israel claimed more land than was originally allotted to them and the Palestinians were furious, but they couldn't do anything about it because they were outnumbered. In 1967, the Six-Day War erupted between Israel and Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. Israel won that war too. Israel took East Jerusalem, the West Bank, and Gaza and had been occupying those areas by force. Over the years, there was a lot of fighting between these neighbors. There were peace talks, treaties, and broken promises. Well, in the 1990s, Israel pulled out of Gaza and the West Bank in the display of good faith. But there was still fighting going on. Right now, Hamas is the group that represents Palestine. And the other day on October 7th, they started up the fighting again, which was not really that intelligent because historically, Israel had been whooping their ass every time they tried to fight them. But the Palestinians say they want to be free to live their lives without Israeli interference or oversight. But look what happened. Hamas stepped up to Israel with a surprise attack and Israel pulled out the big boys and attacked back even harder. Israel's trying to give the Gaza residents time to evacuate the land before they go in and demolish Palestine for all the pain and death they just caused. But there just aren't enough resources to help the people of Palestine leave. So many are describing the impending attack on Gaza as genocide, because once Israel decides it's time for the big strike, no force in Palestine will be able to stop them. And that's where we are. Everyone is hurting while watching this unfold. Everyone is scared. From continent to continent, all eyes are on the Israeli-Palestine war right now. With the war in Ukraine still going, everyone is scared to be alive right now. Anything can happen. And all we can do is just watch and wait and see. In other news, a woman in Sweden is being called the bionic woman after a three-year trial of an intelligent prosthetic limb that's controlled by her central nervous system. The bionic arm was created for Karen as a replacement for her missing limb, which she lost in a farming accident 20 years ago. A group of engineers and surgeons from Sweden developed the revolutionary new bionic limb, which functions almost as well as a biological arm does. The bionic arm was created using a process that directly fuses her bone to the implant. Electrodes were implanted into her arm muscles and nerves that allow her to control the arm without using cables connected to other parts of the body, like traditional prosthetics. The result is a robotic limb that's connected to Karen's brain and central nervous system. This is an incredible development in the field of prosthetics and a testament to the incredible stride that technology is making in the medical field. Well, it's time for a break. Have you ever been the target of a stalker? I have, and it's the most disgusting experience. Today, we'll speak with a woman who managed to escape her stalker. Warning, there's a trigger warning for women who've gone through assault. This woman will describe in detail what she went through. When we come back, don't miss it. Be sure to subscribe to The Feist! 
sexynews.com. Women's news, views, and issues every single day. Be feisty and informed. Join us. Welcome back. I am T. Erica with the Feisty News for Women. Girl, guess what? According to the Office of Justice Programs, every year in the U.S. more than 1 million women are victims of stalking. It's tough to prove and even more tough to get justice. But that wasn't the case with our next guest, Katherine Carraway, which is not her real name. She agreed to speak with the Feisty News on the condition that she can remain anonymous. Katherine, welcome to the Feisty. Please share with us, how did you manage to get rid of your stalker? Hi, my name is Katherine Carraway. I'm in disguise today because I managed to escape a stalker. I do have every reason to believe that if he finds me today, he will kill me. He is angry that he has been caught. I first met him uh, when I was at a happy hour with a friend. I was introduced, so I trusted him right away. After three months of pursuing me, um, I finally relented and went on a date with him. It wasn't but another three months into the relationship, six months after meeting him, that his volatility really began to show. Just right before I was going to leave my house, he showed up and said, hey, I was in the neighborhood, thought we could just ride together to the restaurant. I didn't see any harm in doing that. So I did. I got in a shock. We went to the restaurant. It was a grotesque display of humiliation. It is about the best way I can describe it. Finally, after dinner, I thought he was taking me home, so I did get back in his vehicle. Instead, he took me to his house, and that's when I saw the violent side of him. He was pulling me by the hair trying to get me into his house and something in my gut told me if I if I go into his house, I wouldn't I wouldn't survive. So I fought and I ran. I did call a girlfriend and we we talked about it and she encouraged me to report it to the police. So after working up the nerve to report it, the police took the report, it did nothing about it. All they told me was you shouldn't talk to him anymore. Well of course I already knew that. After that, um, there was a, a, the news broke that a local woman had been murdered. She'd been shot in the back of the, of the head. And he had stopped me and was talking about it. And he made a comment. He said, would you rather know death has come? And I was very cavalier about it. I didn't give it another thought. I said, no, I guess I wouldn't. Um, but as things turned worse, I regretted that. Every day I waited for a death that I wouldn't see coming. Every morning I woke up not knowing if it was going to be my last. And every night I would sleep in my clothes right down to my running shoes. I never would get into pajamas because I always felt like I had to be ready to run. At this point, he was stalking me. He was showing up in my backyard. Every time I left my house, he, was, he would be there. At one point I was at the grocery store. When I left the grocery store, I popped the trunk of my car which unlocked the vehicle and he got into my car and I couldn't get him out. He just had this calm look about him and he looked at me and he, he said just very calmly, you were mine and I don't share. And that shook me to my core. I jumped in my car and was able to get away. At this point, all I could do was gather evidence. Hiring a private investigator would completely change the course of what happened. The private investigator was able, within a week, was able to get enough footage, video, and evidence to be able to file charges against him. I went to another state when I, I was not associated with in any way, and I rented a P.O. box. And I also rented a place to live. Instead of renting for an apartment like at a big apartment complex, I rented from an individual. Um, I was able to then change my name, and now I live under a, a new identity. I've now been in hiding in plain sight for over two years, and I love it. To be able to go to the grocery store and not worry about a man climbing into the passenger seat of my vehicle is quite liberating. June of 2023, I'm aware that he had reached out to a family member of mine and tried to ascertain my location. Fortunately, my family members aren't going to give me up. Um, not all of my family even knows where I live. He still continues to look for me. 
And when things started coming out at trial, I learned that was his sixth victim. And shortly before the trial, his seventh victim reached out to me. Um, so I know he continues to do it. He's not been rehabilitated. Because I'm the only person to ever win a conviction against him, the six women before me, they didn't follow through on the charges. They dropped the charges because they were scared of him. I was scared of him too. I didn't drop the charges. He needed to be a convicted stalker. Absolutely, Catherine. He deserved to be a convicted stalker. And I'm so proud that you had the courage to follow through. If you need encouragement and advice for getting rid of a person who's trying to be a part of your life without your consent, find Catherine at unfollowme.com. Well, thank you for watching the Feisty News for Women. I am T. Erica. Remember, be feisty. Women must be seen and heard.